So I entered the world of online dating with high expectations. Maybe I was naive, but I really did believe that this was going to yield a higher class of men than I had found in the bar-centric approach to dating that I'd had previously. And at first I was really, really picky. I would read and judge every word, I would show it to my friends and debate it, and I got rid of 95% of all applicants just right off the bat. So in this process yielded Edwin, who only wanted to talk about skinny dipping. And Aaron, who within 15 minutes of sitting down stated, online dating never produced anything good. <laughs> And Mark, whose picture was five years old, which meant he was 20 pounds heavier and 20% bolder, and he took me to a baseball game. And while we were tailgating, he asked me why I was doing the online dating. And I gave the standard tired of eating men in bars answer. Um, and then I asked him, and he said, sometimes I want a relationship, sometimes I want to have some fun, and sometimes, and here he paused and very pointedly looked me up and down, Sometimes I want someone to fuck. So most girls, I think, would just give up at this point. But I thought, I just needed to spend less time screening and more time in the meeting. I needed to, to put more men into the pipeline. So I just cut my standards. If he had a job and was halfway decent in his picture, good enough. So, and then I met Joe. And Joe and I dated for three months before he decided that there just really wasn't any chemistry here. So, and um, then I met Steve, who um, was also 20% heavier, 20% balder, and carried a man purse. And we got to the Japanese restaurant, and he basically took a bath with those uh, washcloths that they put on the table for you. So, and then there was Scott, who um, we had brunch, we met for, for brunch, and his first words were, dude, I am so hungover. <laughs> so at that point, I just abandoned standards altogether. And I met Matt, who was great, and I was really excited about our first date until his wife called me. <laughs> so, but then I met dating rock bottom, and his name was Brian. He stood me up on our first date, and when I called him, he said, sorry, I slept through it. And then he begged me for a second chance, which I gave him, because I had no standards left. <laughs> so I showed up to the restaurant for the second attempt at our first date, and I saw him right away, because he was the only man in the restaurant in shorts and a ratty t-shirt. Um, also proved the, uh, held to the 20% downgrade rule with baldness and, and heaviness. So we go, we sit down at the table, and he notices that I have a sunburn been in Florida, and he reaches across the table and proceeds to run his hands across my chest, staying mere inches above the, the sexual assault zone. And to make matters worse, I am completely phobic about being touched, so I push myself back against the booth and I start hitting him with my menu. <laughs> and he just kind of sits back, like, yeah, okay, like this happens all the time. Maybe it does. So I already knew that he had two kids, ages nine and two, and I found out that one was from a one-night stand, and one was from a one-week marriage. So I said, what's with the one-week marriage? And he said, oh, she's insane. And I said, didn't you know she was insane before you married her? And he said, well, yeah, but I needed a mother for my kids. So do you want to be a mother for my kids? <laughs> um, how many kids do you want to have? Uh, I don't, I don't really know, um, uh, well, are you going to work when you have kids? I thought I'd, um, work from home. Oh, you're one of those women. Okay, look, let me bottom line this for you. I've created a three-month business plan to find a wife and a mother for my kids. I'm going on approximately two dates a day, six days a week, and seeing 280 women, because I need to get this done. <laughs> I have three qualifications. One, you must be willing to raise my children. Two, you must be willing to give me more children. And three, you must be willing to stay at home doing nothing but raise the children for minimum one year after each birth. Now, I feel like we're okay on the first two. I'm going to need a little more from you on the third. So what do you think? Are you in? I assumed he was joking. So I laughed. He looked at me completely straight-faced and said, I'm serious. 
Look at what I'm offering you. I have a good job. I make a lot of money. I have a house. I'm willing to commit to take care of you, to give you kids. Do you know anybody else who's offering you anything like that? <laughs> and the thing is, when you put it that way, <laughs> he kind of had a point. You know, and I, he, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't romantic, and he wasn't charming, and he wasn't particularly easy to look at, but I don't know what any of that had really gotten me anyway, and I started thinking about it, and I thought, I could, I could just be done with this. I could be done with the search. I could be done with the online dating, and the, the bad dates, and the raising of hopes, and the crushing disappointment that came after every date. And then I thought, well, you know, it's, it's kind of like an arranged marriage. And those have worked out kind of okay for a lot of cultures for centuries. So I said to him, you have a point. And then I accepted a second date. And we walked out of the restaurant and we, we got out to the sidewalk. And he came up behind me and he grabbed my hips and he pulled me up against him and he said, let's check out these baby making hips. And I <laughs> screamed and I jumped away and I'm swatting to get him away from me. And he's just looking at me like, what? What's going on? And I didn't know what to do, so I started to walk away from him towards my car. And he came up behind me and he put his hand on my head and he started to play with my hair, which is the last thing a touch phobic person wants, and I just knocked his hand away and I said, look, I need a lot of personal space, okay? And he said, oh, you're not one of those girls, are you? And in that minute, I kind of realized that, uh, that I was. I was one of those girls that wasn't going to settle very well. And so I looked at him and I said, well, if by one of those girls you mean one with standards, then unfortunately, yeah, I'm one of those girls. <laughs> <laughs>